Would you like to know why some tech certifications can have a big impact on your career and others are almost meaningless? If so, this video is for you. My name's Mike Gibbs. I'm an enterprise architect with approximately 25 years experience. I've spent about two decades helping people get their first tech job, get promoted in tech, move into tech leadership roles. And uh, I wanna talk about why some certifications, the big ones, like the CCIE, the CCDE, the CISSP, the AWS Solutions Architect Professional, the Azure Solutions Architect Expert, the Google Professional Cloud Architect, the CCSP, the CISM, the CEH Master, and some other certifications mean a lot. And others, they just don't get you the interviews and they don't make managers come and scream to you. So, Hiring managers care about two things and hard certifications prove something different than softer ones. So when it comes to hiring managers, we typically care about someone's competency, ability to do the job and do it well, and ideally be in the top 25% of the people we interview. And the other is what we typically call the four E's. Now, the four E's, which I'm going to talk about what they are, came from Jack Welch. And Jack Welch was the CEO of GE when it was the most valuable company in the world. And he created a management institute that so many of us ultimately learned from in some way, shape, or form. So a lot of hiring managers will follow the four E's, uh, whether they call it that or not. So what hiring managers are really looking for after competency is energy, enthusiasm, edge and execution. And I'm going to tell you what that is. So energy is about how much you're willing to do to succeed and how hard you'll work to make yourself better in your career. So that's energy. And think about it. If you were hiring somebody, wouldn't you want someone that wants to do the work that's excited by the work? Now, the next thing that hiring managers talked about uh, for that was part of these four E's is enthusiasm. And that is how excited are you to learn, grow, and be better, take better care of your clients? Again, wouldn't you want this as a hiring manager? Now, the next one is what's called edge, and that's being competitive because you want to be the best. Now, if you had two people on your team, would you want the gold medalist or would you want the last person on your team, typically speaking? You'd want the gold medalist. So that's typically what they're talking about. And gold medalist types, and that could be people that pursue big degrees, big certifications, and big jobs. And that's what they want to hire, someone that's going to grow with a company and be the best of the best. And the last part of that is called execution or the ability to get things done, especially tough and challenging things. So let's think about this from a hiring manager perspective, which is going to be harder, which takes more energy, enthusiasm, edge or, ex 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 or, edge or execution, a CCIE that you spent 2000 hours preparing for or an AWS cloud practitioner, which you did in a week or two weeks. Now, it's nothing against the AWS cloud practitioner. There's lots of people that have a cloud practitioner or no certifications that are quite great. And hiring managers care about great, but we're talking about the value of certain certifications. So that's why a CCIE is huge from a hiring manager perspective, while a Security Plus might not be, even if it's fi a fine certification. It doesn't have that people had to fight for it. So let's talk about that, what that means. So let's talk about the characteristics of the people that do the hardest exams and actually pass them. So typically speaking, they have a lot of energy and enthusiasm because you're not going to pass a big certification like a CCI or a CCDE without a lot of focus, energy, enthusiasm, edge, and execution. But it doesn't have to be just the CCIE. A certification like the AWS Solutions Architect Professional, only about 3% of all AWS certified people actually hold this certification. So be in the top percentage and go for it. The CISSP is another one. Uh, 
That's another certification that does a lot for your brand. I've noticed that after I train people in the CISSP, of course, they have to have the skills for the job first. But as soon as we put the CISSP on the resume, they're getting phone calls from recruiters and they're much more successful. So it's not the exam. It's the person and the characteristics of the person that you need to think about. But I hope that makes sense. Now, again, it's a motivation and commitment. Now, if you're going to hire someone and you want them to be part of your company and you want them to be committed to your company and care about the company doing great, the person that does the hardest things that had to study for 1500 hours for something shows long term commitment. They will fight to be the best in a legal matter, or at least was what we're talking about. They're going to do what it takes, even if it means mislead, miss meals just to study to pass something. Now, typically speaking, those that are able to do the highest difficulty things are often the smartest, not always, but often the smartest and often the toughest. And the people with the most grit and mental toughness, typically speaking, often rise to the top as well, especially if they have some degree of emotional intelligence. So what you really want to do is show that you're in the top 10% in this aspirational mindset. Because when it comes to most organizations, the top 10% gets promoted and promoted and promoted. So you wanna do everything you can in the top 10 and the top 25%. That's where you're gonna be safe in tech. That's where you typically don't have to worry about getting laid off or worried about AI replacing you because you have the best of the best stuff. So think about that and think about it. So I can tell you, you know, from a sales perspective, from a consulting perspective, from an architecture perspective, the better your credentials are, the more it can mitigate any questions in someone's mind. So think about that. Also, one last thing about these top and most challenging exams is they're more about judgment. They're heavily scenario-based. They make you evaluate trade-offs. They need to think, make you think about it from a business perspective. Now, when hiring managers are asked, what are your top 25% people? And tech executives are asked, what are your top 25% of the people? They're people that know how to solve problems. They're people that can see the big picture. They're people that understand changes in one part of the system to another part of the system and are typically strategic thinkers. So you can see how as you start getting to the top and things get scenario-based, they force you into a strategic thinking approach, which is what you're going to do in any top paying uh, IT career, whether that be a network architecture career versus a strong network engineering career, a security architect versus a security engineer. These are the skills of the top of the top, typically speaking. What we're looking for, that energy, edge, execution, uh, and enthusiasm, that's where we're typically going as managers and what we want. So think about how these could reflect your brand and why it would do so. If you'd like to become a cloud architect, a security architect, an AI architect, a network architect, an enterprise architect, join me in a free architecture webinar. We run one each week where we talk about the architectural role. We talk about what we do in the role. We talk about the skills that you need on that role, how to skip HR and get hired when you don't have the background so you don't get auto-rejected. And it's all free. It's on Zoom. While we do those webinars, I will answer any questions you desire about any architecture career or other tech career for that matter that we can do while we're on these free webinars. And it'll be on Zoom so we'll talk live. The link for this free webinar is in the description of this video. Please join us on a free webinar. Also in the description of this video are so many resources to help you uh, in your IT career. There'll be resources on how to win the interview, for example, resources on how to become a cloud architect or an AI architect or an enterprise architect, uh, resources on what certifications look good for your portfolio. So kind of keep that in the back of mind, description of this video and all free. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, maybe subscribe and hit the bell to our channel to be notified of new videos to help you in your IT architecture career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now and I look forward to seeing you soon.